Hello, allow me to continue where I had left off yesterday. Uh, both my apologies and also what they call accepting reality that this EMI EMC shielding has a tremendous very wide both the implication and theory and practice. So, theory has been developed such that uh, probably along with the communication and along with radiation and along with antennas and all. So, if you look for a simple search on the internet you will find tremendous amount of data and also there are textbooks and textbooks and textbooks. And on the other hand the actual practice has been going on parallelly saying somebody has been developing gasketing, somebody has been developing windows means that small openings through which you have to take things and this also has been going on very very in a parallel course. Like so many other uh, things sorry for being judgmental here practices continue irrespective of whether the theory is developed or not whether it is fully understood or not. So, on the other side by using simple reducing things to manageable level theory also has been developed and now with computation and all with a reasonable uh, prediction they can make out how to solve problems. And because of the complexity any number of fire fighting design services are available so that they can implement the theory and then the practices they have been following for a long time. So, you to I have given an example of how at home if you are an audio enthusiast you will see that hum is real it could be 50, 60, 100 or 120 hertz hum. And if you touch somewhere uh, there will be something and then grounding also is real uh, with respect to this uh, hum and noise. This apart somewhere we have to make a beginning that we should start. So, I started uh, this where I would like to apologize saying am I reading out from commercial trade uh, what do you call literature yes and no because it is more like a white paper and somebody has got down to it and written things in a concise manner with examples and partly taken from probably Tom White's book and partly taken from their own field studies. So, in all this I will get back you to for this thing which I left yesterday. So, you see here finished requirement for structural metals. So, we have this saying no what type of coating and all you give and then it seems to be common compatible coating seems to be this chromate persuasion or chromate conversion. As you go down this each company has its own uh, trade name and compatibility. So, you see here the first group 1 talks about uh, these various things including gold and silver and so on and all the way down you have uh, magnesium and tin and all that with a each of these groups overlaps making it possible to safely use materials from adjacent groups. So, the issue being here is that depending on the type of materials we use and depending on type of contact surfaces we use when plate something here has to make a contact this way the dissimilar materials thing come and as if it were not sufficient we have the problem of moisture and other I will say electrolyte type chemicals in the atmosphere. 
So, it in everything forms a nice cell. I have given an example of how nickel cadmium batteries are made. So, obviously, nickel and cadmium do not uh, <coughs> go together. So, uh, kindly read it with me here. So, we have here uh, you know big list of chromate conversion coatings, iridite and can be considered as uh, this thing and then they have given from their own uh, characteristic this thing saying we try to conductive urethane coatings. This coating sticks to the, the surface where you want to make a seal which is a very positive thing. So, they have given here uh, saying you know uh, I think if you remove all the double <laughs> negatives and all not enough actually you no know, a lot can be said about surface preparation need to be said about it. So, they have given about uh, you know how much and so on and so on. Smooth to the touch when cured recommended that the coating be cured at room temperature 2 hours followed by their uh, thing no it, it probably it comes to around 120 degrees centigrade 1 and a half hour whenever alternate cure cycles are available and so on and so on. The thing is all this have been developed saying how to apply these materials. So, you have here saying corrosion potentials of various metals and EMI gasket materials. So, we have this you know if you take uh, silver plated copper and so on and all that you know aluminum filled elastomer copper and nickel and so on. We have a large number of numbers like this. So, I suggest you read up more about it what is galvanic corrosion. For galvanic corrosion a unique set of conditions two metals capable of generating a voltage electrically joined by cath and immersed in a fluid capable of dissolving the less noble of the two an electrolyte. In short the conditions of a battery must exist which is exactly what a few sentences ago I had shown you. So, whenever you have any of these two things you have a liquid which forms the electrolyte and then you have two dissimilar metals it is almost like a battery. So, you know what happens when you do not want it it will become a battery when you want it it does not that is the reality of. So, there is something called the galvanic potential that but in spite of it a caution has been given here. Tables of galvanic potential do not accurately predict the corrosivity of the metal filled conductive elastomers because of the composite nature of these materials. These tables do not measure directly to important aspects. See? corrosion resistance the corrosion of the mating surface flange and so on and so on and so on. If you go down you will see that huge amount of data is generated allow me to move on to the next slide. Ah. So, like all other including IP 67 test fire immersing something for long periods and also for drop tests and all that there is no simple easy way to predict behavior chaotic. I have told you the joke about uh, raining on my picnic. So, either way we have a problem if I carry an umbrella it would not rain. So, looking funny if I do not carry an umbrella it will rain getting wet. Same thing in the case of this EMI also after the EMI all the precautions are taken everything is tested using test fixtures like this you understood. So, a uh, lot of stuff about uh, how the weight loss is there over the uh, time how uh, 
corrosion um, takes away the material and so on and so on like this. So, so we have this very important thing corrosion control by and large presents the same problem whether the gasket is silver filled, monel wire filled or tin plated. Furthermore, a designer must understand the factors which promote galvanic activity strive to keep them at safe level it should be recognized some corrosion is likely to occur. So, seal to seal and so on no? non conductive so on huge amount of data is available and then here <laughs> pictures are shown of the test results you see around the edge where it is exposed to the atmosphere and it can get all the necessary moisture you will see that it has corroded all around at the edge the center does not seem to be so bad comparison of corrosion from chosil and pure silver filled elastomer with aluminum this uh, well I would not say it is not real it is individual case specific individually case specific every time minor variations including the clamping pressure including the ambient uh, conditions we have this problem. So, we have this class C test and uh, if moisture is expected to reach the flange interfaces in class C marine flange surfaces should be coated at to make them more compatible with the EMI and so on and so on there is a huge amount of how to deal with all these situations. So, if you move on a little to the right side you see here the correct pressure and how much of deflection no, is allowed in these things because that is a very critical thing it is down somewhere here because it is a pdf file. So, I have to need to go back. So, you see here fastener should be located such that pressure distribution is uniform at the corners groove designs and so on so on as you go down ok. So, you see here gasket deflection ranges have been given saying typically things like this solid very small and you see here especially thin ones negligible it is only 25 micron. However, you have a lip like thing which makes it more flexible it is hollow inside we will have the advantage is better uh, this thing for a 5 mm uh, build up you get a tenth of a quarter inch you know small uh, thickness like that. Hollow gasket configurations are useful when large gaps are encountered or where low closure forces are required. So, again if you remember I P 67. So, if you remember I P 67 you need to apply force on all the sides if this were to be a thing that needs to be sealed obviously, you start with 1, 2, 3 all this no almost like an automobile crankcase large forces are allowed, but you cannot do it every time if you have a simple power control panel like what I was showing you you cannot afford to take a ring spanner and tighten everything or uh, in fact use a torque wrench and tighten because there are some issues about frequently being you know you should be able to do it and then doing something like that is expensive. So, invariably they have large gaps or where low closure forces are required. So, low closure force means you just need to shut and then turn one lever and the thing stays in place that is what I had shown you and the outdoor camera there. So, hollow gaskets and tabs in the text and tables are referred as peak gaskets because they are little like that minimum wall thickness of hollow uh, this thing is at about you know 0.5 millimeters and then up to typically 1 to 2 millimeters it will be there. So, there are compression limits also saying 
a compression stop should be provided. In the next coming a few pictures, they will show you saying if this has to meet here, it is not just enough if you put a little bit of gasket here. You have to make sure that you cannot squeeze it. That is what the table talks about saying. You put a stopper to ensure that beyond that it cannot be squeezed. And then, uh, so we have this stuff about manufacturing technology, how do you die cut and so on. So, based on this, because exactly because of this, when I told you about it is a specific case specific meaning every time we need to find out how the things work. So, we have here saying uh, depending on how well the tolerances are held during when you blank them out fully mold them or when you punch them out or you have an extruded strip. Okay, die cut gaskets and so on. Uh, this is more a detail of the see here this is what I was talking to about. So, you have you know forces and uh, how do you thickness and all that I will just go through quickly. Now, you see here that it is just not enough you have pressure sensitive adhesives and how to attach it No friction fit in a groove. So, some of you who enjoy or who have watched people cooking using a, a pressure cooker, you see they all the pressure cookers come with a gasket. In these parts of the country it is common and we cannot afford to have very hard gasket in you know in which you tie things uh, I am sorry <laughs> you have wing nuts or all the sides or levers and you clamp it with large force that is only used in places like our laboratories where we have, we have autoclaves and then we have vacuum and we have pressure and all that all other places you have just a split gasket like this small gasket it sits on two things and then you close the lid and then you slide the lid and we expect it to stay in place it is ok it does not matter a gasket probably costs 50 rupees or little more than that I will call it a a dollar. So, you can change it once in a while. In fact, uh, I am one of the persons who keeps a spare gasket at the first sign of any leakage or any movement which is too smooth, we discard the old one and then start using the new one, which is probably quite a bit to do with you have seen this no. We have adhesive, non-conductive spot bonding and uh, friction fit in a groove and you see any number of robotically dispensed form in place conductive elastomer. You would have seen this as your caulking which is used for windows. You have the RTV compound, room temperature, vulcanizing some rubbery material advantage of it is for quite some time is expected to continue to be soft it should not become hard if it is hard it has some problems. So, just before the arrival of winter probably people seal all the windows with this with the window sealant and afterwards they will peel remove all the accumulated dust and uh, other stuff and then we are back in business. However, in the case of professional equipments, it is not that easy. It means, once you keep it in place until something functionally fails, it is unlikely that uh, you will ever attend to this in a periodic way of replacing the gaskets every time. However, to prevent generally people have a little of this thing. So, routine inspection is carried out to make sure that uh, especially water uh, born or uh, underwater IP 6768 somebody examines it whether they are cracking in the all the elements here. So, we have here friction fit friction fit means nothing but just push it and then it squeezes itself on that on the edge of the enclosure. Then fully customized integral conductive elastomer plastic spacer and so on blah 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 
all this stuff is available from multiple manufacturers. So, it is for you to decide uh, what you would like to have and uh, seen this you have clips to hold it in place and so on. If I get a chance I will try to show a Faraday cage we have on our premises. Uh, I need to access it by taking permission there you see that all these what all have been done here have been taken care of. So, we have all this nice Ah, slowly we are coming back to <laughs> applied force. Most applications do not require more than 100 psi to achieve an effective AMI seal. So, you have a gasket it has to be pressed hard anything more than that as I said no as uh, they have indicated it is likely to damage it. Anything less than that tangential forces can come and corrosion can also start somewhere when optimum saying around uh, 50 to 70. PSI that is uh, uh, area square inch and then we have all this this is fortunately you know this equation does not look so threatening saying how much does the <laughs> flange deflect fastener sizes spacing as a general rule should not be spaced more than 2 inches for stiff flanges more than 20 mm <laughs> for sheet metal if high levels of shielding are required the moment you leave any gap at the time of installation there is no problem at the slightest deflection or slightest change often caused by temperature with combination of changing in humidity will compromise the bonding continuity and connection between them. So, that is the reason the I will see if I can get some pictures uh, before the video. So, we have our uh, Faraday cage. So, that in the cage when the door is closed all along with a pitch of 15 or uh, 20 mm there are fingers which make a continuous contact top to bottom and after some years that fingers have a tendency to set. So, somebody comes and uh, I think once you are allowed to re align it or something afterwards they replace it. And the important thing is that you must conduct a test every time like if you have a balance let us say you need to take a weight of something you do a tear uh, reset same way whenever any professional uh, tests and all are required before they start the test they also try to make sure that the whole equipment is calibrated. So, other than that the chances are. So, here now they have given examples of saying uh, you know how to calculate the bolt spacing in case you want and all that I think you can read it yourself. I will give you the link and uh, otherwise the material will be available. So, you can easily find out about the error factor spacing and all that uh, actual deflection and so on and so on and so on. And we have a little problem about waveguides. Waveguides are again a very, very special case of this thing, it is not connected with this at all, except that all I would like to say is any slightest error, you may completely lose your signal. So, the high, uh, what do you call <laughs> the UHF um, I do not know microwave I think does not go at all inside, but you see that these have been compounded or something by other way. So, all that plumbing now gets seriously affected in case you know we over tighten things and all that. So, there is a lot of little more theory and uh, shielding effectiveness versus pressure and so on and so on is given like that. If you apply more than certain pressure it does not improve the shielding in any way understood no? I will leave it here on two counts because it is not immediately relevant to our packaging and secondly I am no expert at it, but it is for you and most of these companies give you enough 
uh, what do you call data background data data on how to continue with this this is a 200 page uh, note. So, in order to produce a gasket in a groove which will not fail and so on now you see huge amount of data has been given. This I thought now why I was going about <laughs> is you see here this is an interesting thing. Now, you will notice exploded view of an electronic enclosure in this case because of a little because of the ease of analysis and because ease of illustration they have taken an enclosure which has a nicely milled flat flange. Similarly, there is a cover though it is not seen here very rarely a cover will sit directly. So, just under that this part this much part which is mating with this also will be milled clean make sure that it is level. So, it is probably kept on a special clamp on a milling machine and a small finishing cut is there. Then after this if you now try to clamp things and then you this green is a gasket. See here so you have bolt spacing and then you have an O strip conductive elastomer in a rectangular groove. Hmm, you see small errors can happen here lack of conformity to avoid this lack of conformity they try to give the milling cut. So, that generally they sit together there is only in extreme cases this can be done. If you recollect in the video I was trying to show you the water cold uh, inverter I do not know whether it is called an inverter or a drive where uh, because of the high current density we have actually water pipes running inside the electronics. In spite of our using good I hmm, will use the word good uh, coolant we still have issues most coolants uh, still have a problem if it is a pure good water obviously water has the best specific heat anything else you do for improving some other thing including the boiling point including the antifreeze including everything part of that conductivity comes down marginally hmm? how well it can take away heat from the head joining parts and coupled with this any of these inequities we end up with flooded something. I have already talk, talked to you about how flooded gasket I mean a failure in a gasket it ends up with a flooded crankcase. So, your water ends up with you know small leakages will be there which go into a crankcase and these will get circulated and then normal cases there is no problem because once in a while I think routinely you check these things. So, as you go down you see you have this beautiful thing know where the bolt is spaced where its full force is there is ok, but in between we have the problem of things failing a little. So, further I will go down maximum gasket diameter minimum groove depth. <laughs> So, you see here these are simple cases now by which how you will pack a gasket in a groove, but these are a matter of detail and uh, if you are to design any of these things most likely it is enough for you to sensitize yourself that such things exist you will not be an expert in it because first of all you have to locate the materials find out all these practices secondly after populating or packing the whole thing you have to ensure that you put it through some tests. So, these are all part of the testing thing and how if you over pack it chances are see there is a little bit of creep which has set in here. In this case no nominal groove width it does not matter. So, we have you know so many of these you know nice pictures and all maybe this flow chart 
will give you an idea. You see it very clearly, there is no automatic converging uh, set of rules which will pick one of them. It is still, I want a completely trial and error and completely what do you call uh, blow something and find out it is a little to do with iterative saying select start with something and then build on it. So, it is given here saying select a reasonable gasket diameter calculate groove depth establish tolerances here is the problem normally most of this gasketing if it is molded it will come in a fixed size with probably some blister pack in the blister pack they will probably include already some adhesive if it is not come with it sometimes it will be a dry powder sometimes it is a wet to this thing and then if it is a round or a square no it is usually folded and packed such that it sits nicely. So, a circle now if you fold it you can like reduce the whole thing into a one fourth of the diameter, but it will end up with three or four uh, things. So, once you open it somebody has to measure the thing saying are these valid the tolerances especially something which is stored both things can happen gaskets swell they become bigger than nominal and also they become brittle and sometimes they shrink. Shrinking in the thickness is not so bad, but shrinking in the overall <laughs> material the whole size does cause a problem which happens in the case of the cooking gaskets. If you start with an 8 inch yeah I think 8 inch looks big 200 mm is big probably they are all 180 mm. A worn gasket you will notice that it will would have shrunk by about 5 millimeters and then just that 5 millimeters sufficient for it to absolutely unusable. So, here you talk about gasket deflection, minimum gasket deflection formula 3 calculate nominal groove width, verify that final groove dimensions are satisfy both minimum and maximum deflection and groove fill limits under worst case tolerance conditions. This is for only calculating the groove dimensions, but I said it is a professional specialist job normal electronics people need not worry too much about it. So, there are so many of these uh, formulas and fortunately this formula is easy to use because next level of maths is not involved. There are no integrals, no differentials, no summation, no matrix multiplication and so on. Oh, we are coming into porous region. So far they were solid though the elastomer may have some small cells inside either open or closed. We come to a very nice interesting thing is a mesh gasket. Any advantage of a mesh gasket to start with overall weight is less. Secondly, again going back by the original theory, the amount of depending on the frequency, the lower the frequency, the smaller the holes are there, higher the frequency um, I do not know, I am not able to make out. All I know is 2.2 and a half mm is sufficient for 30 megahertz which was the earliest uh, communication designs uh, I have done. So, you see that the advantage of a mesh is they can be spaced close together and if you just pack an area with it overall the amount of material content is small the movement material content is small because a mesh is made of wire string. You can use the highest quality material and during the manufacturing they have perfect contact. Reasonable example is your coaxial cables or even shielded wire which you use for audio seen that no it has a nice braid like this criss cross braid. Imagine a same braided thing, but much more closely controlled and much more thicker. So, you have criss cross thicknesses of not just one uh, maybe a dozen layers and so on. Here what they have done is mesh strip gasketing the use of mesh strip with elastomer core provides additional resiliency. Little problem with the earliest thing is that 
if something can be made porous chances are uh, it may not do the uh, thing properly I would you call it is f um, the function of isolating or shielding it may not done properly if it is very porous and it is very dense it is not flexible anymore. So, they have tried to give here and you know they have given with all these things you know saying uh, what is packed with obviously inside you no know, is where the mesh is there this part is the other uh, what you call a backing up thing which can be held together. So, things can be pushed inside then we have a simple non conductive adhesive is sufficient and subsequent pictures will show you more and more about so you have the mesh portion itself can be punched you have the mesh portion that is punched it sits properly and you see here then large amounts of specific cases on how to take care of most cases. So, you see here there are gaps unwanted gaps are there there are gaps there are places where things touch each other. So, we can see here reverter spot well strip or mounting fin ok uh, so on and so on no large number rivet, uh, rivet or spot weld aluminum extrusion to cover our cabinet ok door. It is a little like is it not common sense of course, it is common sense, but in the rush of things or something or are trying to concentrate on other thing chances are we will miss it. It is a little like proof reading when you write first time I do not think I you know you can really read what you have written. So, you notice that if somebody else reads it no he will notice that uh, it does not seem to sound well forget idiom normal typos or uh, the full expansion of the printers devil comes in. Same thing happens in the case of these how we implement small detailing while the doors are closed and how we implement small detailing about how to clamp things. Yes, it is a lot of common sense in this case common sense being tried and tested method as compared to hit and miss. This is obvious I think and you can see for yourself when you try to uh, close the door on the top section is a mild amount of rubbing after it hits and in this case it compresses automatically while in this condition this rubbing is considered bad some other conditions it is considered desirable. Whenever you are trying to make a pressure contact which I shall connect in uh, <laughs> which I will uh, repeat in the connectors class, but and wipe seems to be the best way of ensuring contact. So, when even in the case in case it that something is not used for some time a little bit of corrosion or something forms if you touch something and then now squeeze it that surfaces get scraped as con as connected I mean as compared to a simple silver button in a contactor which keeps going but 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 like that no millions of operations. But in the case of our industrial connectors the 3 pole and a 4 pole which we use for our machinery and all that we have a completely metal clad enclosure. So, something goes inside and then slight amount of twist is given the twist has double advantages you have a, a bayonet holder and then something scrapes here. So, from that point of view in this case they are saying door slides an EMI gasket. So, it is for you to take a call on it saying would you want it to slide or not. So, depending on the material depending on the chances of corrosion and all that no and how frequently they use 
the problem is if you want to put it into this corner it is not easy. This corner it looks like now it is relatively easy. So, we go on mesh gas getting materials. So, we come back to knitting. Knitting is it is woven we have a knit and purl like this some a series of gammas which are there and the next one goes into it and that is how knitting is done as compared to a simple mesh cloth. Knitted wire mesh can be produced which can be drawn into wire form. Great majority of shielding requirements are satisfied with the choice of two materials monal or ferrex or standard production materials. Two design required shielding required corrosion resistance of the gaskets. So, you see here two things are given here one is monel is all purpose nickel copper alloy resists oxidation maintaining its conductivity good EMI qualities and very good mechanical strength and resiliency in controlled or protected atmospheres it may be used in contact with aluminum also. Where can we see this? Next time you get a chance anyway do not destroy anything because it is not like one of that popular uh, TV science series. Have a look at your microwave oven that front glass you will see a small you know a cover with small openings that is the one that ensures in the unlikely case with all the internal reflections a ionizing radiation does not get out ionizing the one is the one that causes burns and suspected to cause cancer and so on non ionizing it is fine I, I do not know the difference but uh, let me leave it at that and then all along where they mounted because that itself it is either a, a sheet which is punched carefully or etched in that case or it is a coating directly on the glass the way this is attached to the outside panel is where you are likely to see this. Similarly, when you close the door of the micro oven one of the things is you have a gasket there I expect that at least some of these things are you know taken care of a little I cannot watch for that. But thing is the total exposure time and all that I think the largest cooking may be around uh, 25 minutes to half an hour typically everything is the order of 3 or 4 minutes. And two or three things you will notice it is very different from the refrigerator gasket. A refrigerator gasket has some other function in this case both it has to seal against the heat and um, what you call steam that can escape from inside plus ionizing radiation. So, typically you are likely to see all this. So, ferrex tin plated copper clad steel wire offers the best EMI performance. Leave the commercial or uh, trade notices most of them know with undisclosed manufacturing process we have these uh, materials there are I think as I see now about a dozen major uh, manufacturers are there who give all these uh, gasetting materials other than that lot of contacts are there finger contacts and ferrules which will go in make contact here. For low frequency magnetic field shielding recommended are ferrex versions of knitted mesh high frequency electric field and so on first best corrosion resistance because moment you have gaskets we have all this. So, we have large number of commercial they are listing in the catalog. It is again two three things one is how do you attach their assemble to your um, various parts another is how do you how effective is it in the shielding they need to worry only that part about it which uh, it is there. So, I will just glow, go through quickly hopefully you know oh we have so many of these things you know woven wire and elastomer and huge this thing is there I will see if I can rotate it clockwise. So, 
so you have the trade names and uh, characteristics and so on and of course there are uh, tested and proved certifying agencies which guarantee the whatever claims they have made you have seen here important thing is this EMI ratings Mill S D two eighty five is only a test method. It does not guarantee or it is not a normative uh, procedure saying something should have this much. But if you specify uh, whatever measured values are all reported there. So, you have all these uh, various products and uh, like just like Mill uh, S T D because these are all have evolved from military applications you will see that uh, often cross reference is given to them, but when uh, that thing was going on what you call when the standards and all were being prepared uh, it was a little to do with how testing was carried out. So, that it is field deployable or field worthy not so much as the analytical part probably analytical was also carried out, but because of the speed and all that it was done by practice more than preaching. So, later on I think it moved to the academics and uh, I have all this. So, we are almost coming to the end of the I will say book reading session ok. It just mentions what all I have uh, you know degradation and uh, so on and so on conductivity mechanical abrasion resilience. So, my own uh, <laughs> suggestion for you is kindly go to go look at this particular this thing saying EMI shielding theory and gasket design guide from chomerics by companies that it had name also is given Parker uh, I think it is called Chomerix or Chomerix I do not know and read this book. I mean it is just a note it is very small it is the full thing is around 300 pages, but this section is only around 120 pages. I find it authoritative with both design guidelines as well as a little bit of theory which is backing up. However, if you give a, a simple search you will find multiple hits. So, yes I thought I will uh, anyway next one I will try to do see this particular uh, hearing aid what I have is the in the canal uh, hearing aid what I have. Earlier we had a problem with trying to converse on the phone with it. So, earlier behind the ear and then the pocket hearing aids had to used to have what is called a T coil telephone coil system. So, inside the hearing aid there is a small pickup which magnetically pick up picks up whatever is provided in the that hearing uh, what you call telephone. Old telephones were based on a magnetic speaker you have a coil and then very surprisingly there will be a strong magnet inside. Uh, I had to contact somebody in the communication industry who explained to me why it is you also check up what it is why the magnet is needed and then you have a disc. The thing is whenever any voice is you know excited I mean whenever uh, voltage excites the coil uh, you get the sound and then the stray magnetic field is enough for the hearing aids to pick up these things. So, they were all built with a T coil. Then subsequently it was found out that uh, while it is a blessing in some conditions it is not such a big blessing in all conditions. So, there used to be a switch you can switch on or switch off the T coil if any of you are about my age or uh, already suffer from 
loss of hearing or as somebody says no failure to pay attention when people are talking you look up on that okay so thank you i'll take a i mean i'll stop it here maybe we'll continue in the next uh, this thing meanwhile i'll try to go to the uh, that place where the pictures are uh, for my room and see what best i can do so thank you